Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I am uh, very thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving me this opportunity to reach out to uh, so many of the lovers of the uh, Ahl al Bayt alayhim as salam. And I thank you for taking the time to join. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the next few minutes um, help us on the day of judgment. And uh, inshallah, uh, create our akhirat, uh, plan for our akhirat. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, help as many of us to join today as possible. Um, I would love to know which city you are joining from. So when, um, if you're able to, please uh, do put in your, your, uh, your city as you join so that I can... Um, I can remember you next time too, inshallah. I'm just waiting for a few more people to join. Mashallah, we have uh, uh, 27, 28, the numbers are rising. God bless you all. Um, I wait for you. <laughs> and I'm glad that uh, you are um, making me happy. Jazakallah khair. I, um, on, that, on that note about how I, as a reciter, as a speaker, I'm waiting for you to join. Uh, it gives me joy to be able to share um, whatever little that I know. But I'm also feeling that happiness that we're going to be talking about Imam Hussein Ali Salam and in his name learning something. And when that happens, uh, understand that Bibi Fatima to Zahra Salam Alaiha is the most happiest. So whether a reciter or the person arriving is completely in tune with this idea that something good's happening Bibi Fatima alayhi salam sure is aware of that and she will ensure that um, she will ensure that everybody gets uh, the, that they will <coughs> just give me a moment uh, oh, got it that she, she will ensure that everybody no, there's no debt so the happiest we're making is Bibi Fatima alayhi salam and she greets us uh, at the majlis and the, at the door. Here she is greeting us, inshallah, uh, on the world wide web. So the topic today is about the uh, world wide web of shaitan. I'm not just talking about the internet, but shaitan has his own, uh, he has his own network. And so inshallah, we're going to be able to inshallah, tap into that a little bit, uh, not to get caught up in that web, but to um, get uh, some idea about his strategies. So with that, I see Atlanta, Georgia has joined. Uh, you, oh, Pakistan, mashallah. Welcome, sister. I am so happy uh, that so many of you uh, are making this uh, this effort. Also, I want to let you know that the for those who do not know, uh, the live link uh, the private link for the live majlis that I recite in the morning. It is the same majlis as this, but uh, nowhere near the, the detail we get into here. So uh, it is worth watching them both, I think, if you can, because uh, the, the subject matter becomes more, uh, more, um, more meaningful, inshallah. So I see Canada. If you need the private link, uh, please do write it here in, the, in this... Um, comment section and inshallah we will get back to you so that for tomorrow's majlis uh, here right now it's 2 23 p.m. Uh, on a Saturday and mashallah a beautiful sunny day and uh, for me and especially uh, very very ha uh, very I, I, I um, hesitate to say happy but I can't because uh, on these days of uh, of mourning we, we, we're not happy I would say I'm very thankful, which creates this happiness in my heart. Thankful to be alive. And I uh, recited Surah Fatiha for my father today uh, and remembered the fact that uh, I am what I am because of uh, he and my mother, that today I can uh, commemorate this day where I was, when I was born uh, and, uh, and appreciate uh, the gift of life and the tarbiyat, the upbringing that they have given me, that I can be a zakira of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. So um, it was a good day. I was on the member of Rasul. I was an ambassador for a few minutes, for all the time, 24 hours. Um, we are all ambassadors of our faith, but um, 
when uh, when we're on the member the responsibilities absolutely are greater so i am very thankful for that and uh, i went and did salam in the zari room and i thanked each of the imams for allowing me to mention their name to speak in their name and inshallah to make a difference in our all of us in our minds and our hearts and our souls everyone can be a source of guidance anybody can for everything is a sign from Allah everything is a dars everything is a an example for us to learn from and that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about people who reflect and that my signs are everywhere that you know this is something for those who wish to see who wish to reflect so um, look around and always understand Allah is talking to you through people through their situations through the amazing people you meet the hurt people you meet the uh, the humiliated people the uh, the angry people learn that this is what happens to a person when they have been wronged everything is a is is a is a learning experience and i'm so so thankful that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me this opportunity so we're all here i'm going to start now uh, if i can ask everyone to just do a labaik ya Hussain, do a salawat i just want to make sure i have my water right close to me so i'll just ask for one second inshallah Okay, salawat bar Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Was salatu was salamu ala khayr al anbiya'i wal mursaleen. Khatim al nabiyyin abul qasim Muhammad. Salawat please. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Wa ala ahli bayt al tahirin al masumin. Salawat. وقال الله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن المجيد وفركانه الحميد وقوله الحق بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الذين اتقوا إذا مسهم طائف من الشيطان تذكروا فإذا هم مبصرون سلوات الله مسلي على محمد وآل محمد Surah Araf, uh, Surah Al Araf, uh, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala in Ayat Two O One, and then after that Two O Two, talks about um, what happens when Shaitan visits us. When Shaitan visits the muttaqi, the person who is on this path of righteousness, who is making an effort to be as pious as possible, who is on this journey of self development and self reflection. Uh, for these are all needed in order to get to our destination. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, our muttaqi people, the pious ones, what happens to them is they get this inner piety, inner voice. It's an inner voice that speaks to them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, He's closer to us than our jugular vein. He's always there, but when we access Him and we learn to listen to him calling out to us that is actually our inner voice we need to link up our thinking with that inner voice which is what we call our conscience actually sometimes we say my conscience bites me in reality good things when they when they touch you and bad things make you feel guilty this is the voice of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala trying to get this reflection from us in this particular ayat allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says our muttaqin our what do they do the muttaqun when they when an evil thought comes to them from shaitan they remember allah so they have this taqwa they are god conscious and then subhanallah an amazing thing happens they begin to have an insight they recognize shaitan they are able to understand that it is his misguidance that is in front of him not some other thing often we say this was my own idea 
it wasn't my friend who told me to do this or uh, I thought this makes sense I think this is the right thing to do it is shaitan it is shaitan talking it's not us at all for shaitan comes to us as a whispering voice and he uh, tries very hard to make it he whispers so it, it's just a sublim, subliminal message it's so quiet it touches our core it talks to our nafsul ammara our most base type of thing in our soul that that what freud referred to as id um you know freud has become so well known in the world for having the id and the ego and the super ego um it wasn't freud who thought of this stuff 1400 years ago the holy quran told us about the nafsul ammara and the nafsul lawama and the nafsul mutmain now so all these things are already there uh, and that is how allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tries to explain to us that the inner voice is always going to tell you something good but when you make it quiet when you stop listening to that voice allah allah leaves us to our devices which is very dangerous when we don't feel guilt when we don't feel tears when we don't feel that we need anybody's advice even understand and also when we're not tested these are all signs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has left us and he said go ahead do what we want do what you want and when you keep committing sins and no one's catching you understand that this might not be respite anymore because the concept of imla respite is that Allah gives you some time just like he's giving the enemies of the Ahlul Bayt time but then when the awaited one comes it's going to be a clean cleansing similarly allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says i hold myself back from punishing my people i give them time to right themselves so when uh when we get this respite we're not being lightning is not you know hitting us uh no one's catching us don't think that that's because Allah is okay with it he's not okay with it but he's waiting for us to access him he's waiting for us to listen to that sound you know when you go out with your cell phone what happens you're driving through highways and cities what happens Wi-Fi signals start to come people's funny named funnily named uh, you know <laughs> uh, Wi-Fi packages their networks right and you realize wow there's so many people calling out to me right now i could join them i could become part of them i can use i can access them allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also tries to access us in the same way he tries to send out these signals all the time in different ways not just an inner voice but sometimes an example in front of us the muttaqi in this ayat explain exp, as this ex, as this lie, uh, ayat explains the muttaqi waits and is very cautious and is afraid jazakallah khair for your very kind words waits for waits for shaitan is knows that shaitan is somewhere here and he's going to strike his signals also going to come it's going to come as a wifi signal but the muttaqi people recognize who is their lord and who is shaitan and when that happens allah with his baraka and his mercy is rahma what he does is he gives them a window to see even more he allows them to think far sometimes you ask somebody why don't you do that you could have done this you could have just taken it they, they will tell you I stopped because I thought about what will happen if I do this and then who will catch me and I know I could go to jail da 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 da, da. but in all truth when we don't do some of these bad things we don't even really know we're thinking all this it's later on upon reflection that we say well I I must have thought of the consequences but because it happens like lightning things happen right right after one after the other because the muttaqi is wired to do that He's wired not to uh, do something because he's thinking very far ahead. He's thinking of the repercussions on his 
taqwa, on his soul, on other people, on Islam. He's thinking about the ramifications of one single act, but it's happening so fast that even he doesn't know what's going on in his mind and in his heart and in his, in his brain. But later on, if he reflects on it, he'll say, well, I thought of all that. But in a split second, it's like when you have a near-death experience. I mean, you stop your car, you break, you do that, and you go, I don't know how I had the presence of mind to react. Because all the systems in the body are tuned to an attack, to something going wrong. And the minute they do, everything falls into place. Like those pilots who save aircrafts. Engine is breaking down, this is happening, that is happening. They are looking at so many controls. But their body and their mind and their soul is able to do everything in one fell swoop. That is the beauty of the human body. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَكَدْ قَلَقْنَ الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمِ I have used the best of molds. This is a computer that's not even being used for a few percent of its ability. The potential of this Ferrari, Lamborghini, or and this is an iPhone 40. It's really updated. It doesn't even get viruses, all right? So this is the kind of thing I've made, but the, the person who's using it doesn't use all the apps, doesn't use it to its full potential. And that happens with our gadgets. And um, I might just be talking about uh, uh, gadgets a bit more today because um, I'm expecting some uh, young people to join us today more than others than because of it being Saturday, inshallah. And uh, people are off school and uh, hopefully they will have some time to, to join us today. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he says that these are the people they get insight when they are visited by shaitan. It reminds me of uh, Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam, who when shaitan comes to him three times. Um, and in fact, when you look at the tafasir, there are descriptions, long descriptions of what happened in that particular instance. Because the Quran gives you glimpses and it gives you a summary of something. It's, uh, you know, it gives you a little synopsis of what happened. Now it's up to you to go deep and understand what exactly happened. Give me details. That is why when you see Nabi Sulaiman alayhi salam uh, meeting with the, the ant and all we have in the Quran is an ant saying that we're going to get crushed Suleiman and his army are coming and we sometimes have to extrapolate was the ant scared was the ant in awe was the ant this was the ant that if you read the tafsir it'll tell tell you that the ant why it was reacting the way and it's not because it was scared uh, it, this is not my topic, but Nabi Suleiman and the ant then talked for a long time. But the ant, you know why the ant was, uh, was warning the other ants to take cover? The true thing is Nabi Suleiman does ask. And if anybody knows, give me the answer here on the screen. Inshallah, you have read the, this story very deeply. The story of Nabi Suleiman is so, so fascinating. Um, I did a series of lectures on this in uh, Mahi Ramadan last year. Not this Mahi Ramadan. And uh, wow, I think I did five lectures on it. And there was so much more I could have talked about. Uh, inshallah, if we ever get a, an opportunity, I'd love to talk about it again. Because it's, it's, a, it's a tale of wonder and awe. And it's like a fairy tale. And, it, and it, it's all true. So Nabi Suleiman, why does he... Um, why does he, uh, um, he speaks to the ant, and why do you think the ant was saying, take cover? The ant said that, Ya Nabi, you, were so, you are so awesome. Literally, I'm in awe of this huge army, because Nabi Suleiman's army did not just include human beings, but animals and uh, jinn, and he had power over the winds, he had power over the water, he had power over metal. I mean, he had all sorts of, he had such a huge army that there was no space. And, and, and he had a throne that used to keep his entire army on it. And he would fly with this entire city. How can this happen? Well, we've got the Airbus, what, 320? What's the, I mean, the Emirates, it's, uh, um, you know, how many people? 500 people? Over 500 people. That's a small city, right? It's a small village that are eating, sleeping, and even taking a shower. 
so I think sometimes Allah lets all these things happen so we can understand the wondrous stories of the past and say, well, if it could happen now, it could happen then. Because Allah has destroyed many civilizations before us. And he talks about how technologically advanced they were and the plumbing they had. If you look at the old city of Mohan Jadaro, uh, when in Pakistan, uh, when they look at it, they say these people were so advanced. They had, they had like a water system. They had everything. Uh, you know, if you look at the old uh, uh, um, archaeology, uh, the field of is they'll tell you that you find people who were actually able to make uh, air conditioning kind of air with using water and fans and, and all that. So don't think that the civilizations of the past weren't advanced. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the huge towers of, these, of the old civilizations that he wiped out in one fell swoop. Look at what's hap what, what happened in New Orleans when, when that big um, hurricane came. And what's happened right now in Florida and in the Caribbean it's going to take a lot to recreate all that. The Keys, Florida Keys, are so beautiful. The bridge. And when these hurricanes and tornadoes come, everything. Look at the tsunami, how it wiped out what was happening uh, what in, 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 in Indonesia, right? Um, entire cities were wiped out. That shows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can annihilate and wipe out an entire city you would not know it existed before people who were in the area of the tsunami when they came back they said there was an entire village here there's nothing now it got raised the water came and took everything back it didn't just come this way it took everything back into the sea people trees buildings everything went so Nabi Sulaiman al-Islam was an awesome awesome king the biggest king you can imagine. He was a superpower. And Allah had granted him all this. So the ant said, Ya Nabi, the reason I told the ants to take cover is not because you'd crush us, because you're flying. He was flying in the air. There wasn't any fear of getting crushed. Ya Nabi, actually, it was because I didn't want them to see you and your wondrous army and get so in awe that they might forget Allah for a moment. They might start to think you are great. Because this is what happens, right? When we see very powerful people, we see people who are also being very bad with us, right? They're doing dhulm. They're oppressing us. And we think, this guy is so powerful. No one can, no one can do anything about it. You know, no one can help me. Astaghfirullah, we often say, not even Allah can get me out of this one. Astaghfirullah. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who got Nabi Yunus out of a whale. He, and he kept him alive in there. We see people who uh, come out after a month of being under rubble in an earthquake. If Allah wants to keep you awake, alive, He'll do it. If Allah wants you to get something, He will ensure He does it. So never feel helpless and say, no, nothing's going to help me now. This enemy is too big. Right now it feels like that. The Dushmanani Ahl Bayt are so strong that we think, who's going to take over from them? Who can shut these people up? Who can take away their money, their power, their oppressive style? Who can get... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is bigger than all of them. And He says, let them plan. Let them do their thing. We also are planning. Mufassirin tell us, that is the plan of Allah. And it is actually referring to none other than our awaited one. Ajjalallahu ta'ala farajahum sharif. Please recite salawat bar Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. So the Muttaki, Ibrahim alayhi salam, is out, going out to slaughter his son. Often I wonder, did he, did he not question his Lord? Like, why do you need me to do this? This is the sign of an obedient slave. He doesn't ask questions. That's what Imam Zamana, Ajjalallah, Ta'ala, Farajum Sharif is looking for, right? Those people don't ask, why should I sit in this fire? Why should I do this? 
we're in this era where we ask why of everything, everything, and it's encouraged. And uh, the education system, in fact, is punitive to that person who didn't ask why. There are places to ask why, and then there are places that you don't ask why. When you love somebody and you obey them and you know that they are only in your interest, for example, your parents, for example, your imam, for example, Allah, you don't ask questions. Often, you know, you're in salah, you're like, Allah, what does it give you that I have to go up and down? I'm so exhausted. Why does Allah want me to be hungry and fast? Why does Allah want me to give him a cut of my money and give homes and zakat? What, what does Allah get out of this? You know, why, why me? Why is he on my case? Astaghfirullah. But understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, has, he's also testing you to see what obedience looks like in you. Because often we do things what, what the people tell us. We're going to do it anyway. For example, when parents say do this, you know they're powerful. You're going to have to do it. It's like a wajibat when Allah says do something, you're going to do it anyway. But the way you do it, as we say, the khushu, that you have to have that, uh, uh, that, that feeling of peace when you do it. That person who begrudgingly does something and just throws the plate of food at you, it's like, eat, yeah, fine, here's your food. Or um, that person who is in, the, is in salah but is like, Allahu Akbar, hating every second of it. And then there's the person who hears, Hayya ala salah, and he says, let's go. And he says, He repeats. This is what is recommended when the adhan is recited. Repeat it and say, Yes, I am going towards success. Yes, Allah is great. Yes, the Prophet is his. This should bring up our heart saying, Let me go to the best of deeds. When this happens, we end up on the prayer mat doing what was expected of us doing what we would have done anyway. But we're doing it with a smile. That person, when you say, bring a, can you pray, please, I'm sorry to bother you. Can you please give me a glass of water? And they say, okay. And they bring it and they're like, here you go. But the other one who says, of course it's no bother. It's my honor. I get sawab for it. I'm so happy to help you. I want to do, you know, I'm re I remember Imam Hussein when I bring you water. And then they give you that water there's a smile on their face, that water becomes sweeter. That person becomes sweeter. That act becomes sweeter. And so, do everything presented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a sweet way. And, Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam, when he's confronted by this accursed shaitan, shaitan says to him, I am God. This is what the tafsir tell you. I am God. Listen to me. Go back. Go back, don't kill your son. Nabi Ibrahim, as we know, throws stones at him. But there, there's a stone of jihad that he's throwing. It's, an emo, it's, it's also, uh, it's a, not a physical much as it is an internal one when he's saying, no, get away from me. A'udhu billahi min ash rajim But he says an interesting thing which really got to me when I was reading those, the Fasir. Different ones will tell you different things. And there's a beautiful uh, book, um, Hayatul Qulub. It has a story of, it's called, I think the book is Concept of God. There's three, I have it right here. Um, there, there's three, three, what do you call it, um, parts. And I have actually two copies of it. Why do I have two copies of something? Let me just show it to you so that you will recognize it. I like to uh, be visual because human beings we need to see things so this book is um, of, and you know what he's on Facebook with me so I am pretty sure that uh, this is uh, a, a redone book uh, the, the translator I think concept of God and yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> this is what I do to my books this one I think has a lot of stories of yeah you've got Bibi Maryam her story Nabi Ibrahim's du'as and, uh, and invocations, um, things that we, you, you, you know what happens beneath the surface. It's such a beautiful book that um, 
I was hoping to read it front to back, but I, you know, haven't done that. But it is worth it. C completely worth it. That one. And then this one. So there's three. Uh, Sheikh Al-Ama uh, Majlisi. So then there is, there's, there's three. And one is about the prophets. One is about the imamat. And I can't remember uh, the third one. But uh, it's three. And you, you must. And these are, by the way, also on the internet. So those of us, uh, those of you who, um, uh, who are... Um, um, helping us get those links like yesterday. Please do find um, Hayatul Kulu by Alama Majlisi and the three parts, and then the concept of God. Uh, and uh, yes, I'm. Uh, I'm. I'm just. Uh, yes, this is life, and it's live. So uh, I'll just ask for one moment, please. I had to remind that uh, every word here is going to be heard by at least 3,000 people. So let's <laughs> talk later. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Thank you. Los Angeles has joined us. So those books especially will tell you a lot about the, the, um, the, the imams, but especially the prophets. So Nabi Ibrahim, alayhi salam, when he's confronted by the devil, says three times. He says, I know the voice of my Lord. You are not Allah. I know when my Lord speaks to me who and what, he's, he, what he would say and what he would sound like. I recognize the voice of my Lord. So when shaitan talks to us, sidles up to us and makes it feel like it's our idea, we should be able to discern, have enough knowledge, but also have a good heart. A good heart that wants to do good things will recognize that this isn't good to do. We'll also understand repercussions. We'll also have insight, as the, the ayat told us. And uh, this, the one that ayat 202 of Surah Al-Araf explains after that, that, but as for their brothers, the devils, they, the devils, plunge them deeper into error and they never stop. Meaning that that person who, uh, who ignores the guidance, that person who um, doesn't, want to hear the conscience that keeps selling, saying good things, that keeps guiding, that keeps giving insight. That person who quietens the sound of their Lord, quietens this, this jugular vein, which is, Allah is closer to us than our jugular vein. So, by the way, the jugular vein is very deep in our throat. That's why you have to squeeze somebody. If you squeeze their throat enough, that's when the jugular vein is accessed. Uh, it, it gets squeezed. And then, a uh, person can um, uh, lose consciousness and die. So that's how close God is, is right where our life source is. So w when we quieten that sound, then there comes a time when Allah doesn't, I wouldn't say He doesn't talk anymore. It's us who are unable to hear Him. There is a point when Allah says, now I leave you. I leave you to the devils. There comes a point when Allah is saying, okay, there's no compulsion in religion. Do what you need to do. My world will not get any different if you love me or not. Um, there's plenty of angels to, to do that, to obey and to pray. and It's you who's going to lose out. So it's a very interesting thing to think about. that um, When you find that you don't feel guilty anymore, you can do a, a sin openly. When we find that uh, there's no voice, no conscience biting us, uh, and it becomes second nature to do these very terrible, immoral things that we do. If there's no more biting of conscience, ask yourself if Allah is giving you respite or if this is His punishment. It's like a parent saying, okay, you want to go near the fire? Go. Let's see how you're going to like that. Go get burnt. Because I've done my part trying to stop you. And when a parent says, I wash my hands off you, it's scary because that kid is going to go. 
But then just like a parent, and Allah has compared himself only to a parent, uh, to a mom, and not, nobody else. Because Allah's heart is even more loving than a mother. That even when she punishes, and she sees that now you've got your lesson, she will save you. And um, Allah in the same, same way, inshallah, when we get very close to that fire of hell in our daily affairs, we're already, already in hell by the works we're doing. Na'udhu billah, astaghfirullah. But when we are doing that, Allah still saves us. Sometimes by a close call, somebody almost caught us. Um, these are the things that put the fear of God in you. You say, oh, if I had been seen in this particular place doing this, that's it. It will be the end of me. So Allah sometimes, even when he's allowing that, go do whatever you need to be. He, his love and mercy sometimes uh, penetrates through that cloud that we had made around ourselves. And he says, you know what? I don't want you to completely get destroyed. Let me give you a little scare. A little scare. And then you will never do that again. It's a lot like when we uh, get caught speeding. It's not a fun feeling, right? And suddenly you see the cop and you're like, no, what in the world? Who am I going to explain this to? Da, 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 da. Then the cop comes and he could actually let you go because that happens too and you're like, Phew. or he gives you a ticket. Both of these are very traumatic experiences no matter how they end. Okay, because you're like, oh, I could have gotten a $500 ticket. It happened to me once and I was let go for, I think it was a $1,000 fine. Yes, I was rushing to a majlis and I was driving. I think it's, the thing is about you know, when you go 50 over the speed limit. Yeah, it's easy to go 50 over the speed limit. So I did that. Cop comes, catches me. And then, yes, sometimes this happens. You can talk them out of it. It's happened a couple of times to me. Not the 50 over, but cops uh, saying, okay, we'll let you go. And he let me go. He let me go. That particular um, uh, infraction means that they, they take your car. They take your car right away. And of course, it's all these points that goes off your license. Da, da, da. Now, that scared me so much that whenever I drive in that particular area, I slow down. See what I'm getting to? When you've been caught once, whether you were let go or whether you were, caught, you were actually fined, you never forget that lesson. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala often makes people who are good, they do one, once, you see, once in my lifetime, I did something bad. These people do it all the time. Nobody catches them. But one time I act, that's because Allah doesn't want you to continue that. He doesn't want us to feel desensitized to sins like those people have. And he's left them to their devices. Moving on, um, we were talking about uh, the libas of taqwa and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after he describes Nabi Adam and Bibi Hawa talks about how um, they were misguided and, and he talks something very interesting that when they discovered that they had sinned the realization hit them, the insight that shaitan did this to me I got misguided. What did I do? At that point, their nakedness, the Holy Quran says, becomes apparent to them. Now they're covering themselves up with leaves. The explanation of this, because what? Usually when we remove clothing, we feel ashamed. But they didn't have clothing. That's because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that He's made human beings pure. And he makes him without clothing. He made the original man that way, man and woman. But you know why they didn't feel shame? They had not sinned. They were pure. They were pak. And the, this, the, the explanation is, and the indication here is, that it is sins that make us shame, shameless and shameful, inshallah. Because... In, in front of our Lord, it doesn't matter what you're wearing, what you're, it matters how clean your heart is, it matters what the taqwa is. So, 
by the way, can I ask, um, some people have dem asked me that please speak more English because our children are enjoying it and Urdu is, uh, you know, then they become restless, etc. So if you really require some Urdu, then uh, let me know. If, you, if you're getting the English, thumbs up would be great. But just uh, say some Urdu, please. If it's, ha if it's really difficult to, because I would like to be able to cater to all who have taken the time today to join So what happened is at that time, their nakedness becomes apparent to them. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends them to the earth. And then he talks to us a few ayat later. And he says, O children of Adam, we have given you adornments. Adornments to cover your private parts and also for beauty. To look good. But remember that the libas of taqwa is better. And then he continues with, Do not be deceived by shaitan as your parents were. For he he's the cause of them losing their adornment. So we find that clothing that Allah has given us is to help us hide our sins, in fact, it's a metaphoric thing for us to understand that he is also giving us an avenue to save our face. He is Satarul Ayyub. And when we are being granted this beautiful gift that he doesn't let people know how bad we really are, that it would be completely foolish for us to undo the work that Allah does miraculously to hide how terrible we, are, we really are the th sins we do in private the things that we have done in the past or in the future that we will do God forbid God has put a stop on that so people don't know otherwise nobody would want to sit with us nobody would be near us nobody would want to even befriend us right so Allah is doing that and here we are telling people what big sinners we are. Now there's a difference when you're talking about sins and saying we, you know, we really shouldn't be doing this or we're trying to get some reflection. But then there's another kind where you go on social media and you put the fact that you are in a nightclub. You put a status location. You check in at a bar, God forbid, or you're checking in at a concert. And then on top of that, you show what you're wearing, which is not very decent. And then you let everybody see the concert too. So what's happening is, you have unveiled your, yourself and shown your sins to others. Allah would have kept your dignity. You wanted to become, as we say in Urdu, kule am gunahgar. You want to openly say, look, and that is... Um, I think it was Hazrat Luqman uh, when he was asked, what is the worst of deeds? He said that the worst person is one who not only commits sins, but he does it openly. Because not only are you causing facade and you're making the society think it's okay, but you're also ruining your reputation, which Allah was preserving for you. Because he knew someday you're going to be sorry. Someday you're going to say, what was I thinking? And here you are with these Facebook posts that never get deleted, with this imprint in the technological world um, that will forever brand you as a person who once did this and who will forever, I mean, people who have some pictures out there, God forbid, it's hard to get it back now. They'll remain forever. So we need to think about the fact that Shaitan. When he strikes, he, he's, he's, he's hitting us badly. And this adornment that we have to hide our sins, take it seriously. Take it very seriously. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then continues and says, Remember that shaitan and his kabila, they can see you, but you cannot see them. It's a very scary concept that first of all, shaitan has a whole army. Of workers 
And on top of that, we're under surveillance. So a God-conscious person, a muttaqi, a person who's always aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and always talks to Him and always does dhikrullah, not just from here but from actions, He's always in the state and as Allah praises these people that they remember me sleeping, standing, thinking, wondering about why did you create this world and you didn't do it for nothing. All these things are thinking and it makes them connected to, his Lord, to their Lord. These are the people, Allah says, when I talk to them and when they see my signs and when they read what I'm saying, their hair stands up. They're so connected to me. This is taqwa. That they're... Hair stands up, but it's not just their hair. Their whole body, their skin reacts. And then their limbs react. Taqwa takes you to that. It starts with that piety, a spirituality. Don't let it end there. When you say, you know, I'm, I'm a good person inside. Absolutely. But you're not carrying your love of God on your sleeve. You're asking questions. Why hijab? Doesn't make sense. Why namaz? Why in this way? Why in Arabic? Don't ask questions. Just do it. Because you know you love God. You know you love Him. Nobody loves Him as much as you do. But nobody would even believe it. Because you don't act the act. You don't even talk the talk sometimes. And Allah can see through our hearts and that is why He has faith in our uh, goodness and, and, and has faith in us returning to Him. But He can't help us much when, if we're going to ruin every... Every, every aspect of our lives in such a way that there's no turning back. We, we, we've burned every bridge to make ourselves look good. right? We have, and we didn't realize that our whole body, by the way, the, the ayat continues, that their whole body then becomes pliant. Like clay, as we used to call it, plasticine when we were young, right? Plasticine, where you could make little clay play-doh, right? You can make them different shapes and stuff. That's what we got to be in Allah's hands. That He can mold us. That He can say, submit, do sajda. Okay, give. Do this, do that. Turn a blind eye. Look down. Cover yourself. Whatever He says, the heart is so in tune with Him, so in love with Him that you don't even have to say it twice, Allah. I'm on it. There are people who love us a lot. They act like that. As soon as you say, I need you, they say, I'm here. Oh, you're busy. No, it's okay. I'm here. What do you need? When you love somebody, you don't ask questions. Somebody gives you a really weird task. Listen, go and hide this and don't tell anybody I told you to do this. Da -da 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 -da. Whatever they tell you, you're like, okay. You don't ask what's going on. That's love. That's obedience. And the body becomes pliant in the hand of the one that one is in love with. It's a hypnotizing thing. Do with me what you please, we say to the people that we're madly in love with. As we say in Urdu, Tum din ko agar raat ko ho, to raat kahenge. Well, Allah is saying, if you love me, show it to me like that. Where what looks to you like something you don't like. Quranic ayat. It may be that you do not desire something. But when we make you do it, understand that it is good for you. Similarly, it may be something that you really love and you really like and it's halal. And you're like, why? It's a legitimate desire. Why aren't you giving it to me? Allah says, it is something that's good for you in your eyes. I know better. So have faith in me. Trust in me. The person that you love, think of someone who loves you more than anybody in the world. Other than a mother, I can't think of anybody. But a mother, any mother, all mothers are alike. All mothers love beyond measure. No matter how they've treated us, God forbid, every mother loves their child. So your mother would do something that is bad for you? It's wrong when we're, we suspect our mothers. It's wrong. Because a mother would never want... Anything difficult and uh, terrible. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Innahu yara'akum huwa wa kabiluhu min haythu la tarunahum. That he and his tribe, they see you. But you don't see them. And 
They are seeing you from places you have no idea. They're hidden. This is much like us being in places where you had no idea there was a security camera. I was talking to someone recently and they were saying how they were changing their clothes in the elevator. Hmm. It was a guy though. It was a young boy. And he said, you know, I just changed into And I said, oh, so the security people must have really... And he said, I forgot there would be a security camera inside the elevator. Right now, we're being watched in every sort of place. In fact, our GPS is finding us from a satellite way up there, oops, way up there in the, um, in the universe somewhere. Right? So when... When the satellite is way up there trying to um, track us and when our credit card purchases and the tolls we paid, everything allows somebody to track every movement in real time. When our phones have locators, then understand that not only is Allah keeping an eye on us, but Shaitan and his tribe are also keeping an eye on us. And just like Red Riding Hood wandering off the straight road that mother had told her to stay on. The minute she enters the woods, the wolf is there. The wolf knows. This is the time where this person is vulnerable. So when we get off the Sirat al-Mustaqim, this is the huge danger that Shaitan and his tribe strike well. The iron is hot. They're opportunists. That is why in our weakest moments, in our most poorest moments, money comes that is not halal. And you say, it's okay right now to steal. I've never st stolen before. Or I've been always a faithful spouse. But now my spouse is withholding all this stuff from me. So it's okay to get affection from someone else. This shaitan is the one he says and he's confessed to the Holy Prophet ﷺ in a very long conversation where he tells the, the Holy Prophet exactly what his strategies are. He says, you know, I'm going to tell you what I do. Because even though I tell you what I do and I'm an open enemy, people still befriend me and they still fall for it. That's the wonderful part about how stupid human beings are. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thinks that this is their, his best of creations. I say they create fasad. Wait till you see how much fasad they'll create, O oh my Lord. And we, again, must remind ourselves, Shaitan was a friend of God. He was a, a, an angel who loved God a lot. The problem was Allah loved human beings. Allah considered us better than any jinn, any, any other thing he had made before. That was the source of the whole problem. And he would make sure anything happened so that we lose respect in the eyes of our Lord. And so be very careful when you make God look bad. Because shaitan laughs and he says, see, you, you warned them about me. You warned them. I even told them what I do. They still come to me. They like me. Told you. And so, let's not let God down. Let's not do that. So, as we go forward, the, we are under surveillance um, thing. <laughs> Just something about technology. Knowing that there are Wi-Fi signals in the air which, ca which call out to us. That there are frequencies here that we, do, we have no idea of. Electromagnetic, whatever it is. There's all sorts of stuff going on. We had no idea until recently. Now we're realizing there's satellites above us. Now we're realizing somebody can be listening in on my phone call or on my, uh, watch my online activities and I would have no idea. Right? There are ways to watch people and they have no idea. If you say something on the phone, it is being picked up when you say certain keywords. It is automatically getting picked up somewhere where people are censoring what people are saying. Therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also ever present. Whenever you feel down and you feel like, Allah, where are you? Are you really here? To understand that just like Wi-Fi signals are in the air, but 
you didn't access them that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also very much there he is hadir and he is ghaib he's present and he's also unseen sounds contradictory but it isn't Allah is too great for us to see him with our eyes we can feel him we can in, we can encapsulate him all in our hearts but the eye will not be able to take him in that's expecting uh, putting the <laughs> just too much so the level of taqwa that um, that um, that human beings need to aspire towards this is checking the clock um, are that when you know that you are in danger, you're being watched, someone's out to get you, you whispers and makes it think you, it's your own thought, someone is out to get you. It is very important then to be alert. You drive, you know, when we drive offensively, what happens? We are waiting. This guy could do this. This guy could come in my lane. This guy could stop suddenly. So you are watching everything. A good driver looks all around. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually mentions this. Um, um, I'll, um, I'll go, when I go forward, I, I will uh, come to that. Where he, um, where he says, وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمَ اتَّقُوا مَا بَيْنَ أَيْدِيَكُمْ وَمَا خَلْفَكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ Surah Yaseen. وَمَا تَعْتِهِمْ وَمَا تَعْتِهِمْ من آیت من آیات ربهم اللہ کانو انہا مؤرزین what happens is I am a little bit tired just got home from the mosque uh, and I knew that you were all waiting and uh, so that's why I'm a little bit exhausted but inshallah it, is, it gives me energy when you're all here alhamdulillah so when Allah says did we not warn you to be, a fr to be worried about he who attacks you from the front and from the back and we keep sending signs upon signs to you. But there is nothing that makes you turn towards us. That makes you believe in us. Pretty amazing thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said there. Because it is shaitan who said, then I will come to them. In the same, same scenario, we're talking about Adam and Eve. Where he says, I'll come to them from before them and behind them. Allah says, did we not warn you? But you still, no matter how many signs we send you, you keep, you keep avoiding. You keep not hearing me. And it's sad that we human beings allow ourselves to get there in that kind of situation. And that is why the, the scholars tell us that the, and, and the imams that taqwa can be something we aspire towards. But then how do you keep that taqwa safe? by staying in a place where there will be least danger of getting tempted. And that means you avoid places where you know there will be backbiting. Avoid a place where there will be this need to unveil yourself. Avoid mixed events. Avoid events where there's going to be dancing and singing. Avoid an event where people will be drinking Avoid an event that will make you forget your Lord. Much like the ant said, we don't even want to look at all because it makes us love dunya. The Holy Prophet ﷺ once told Bibi Fatima to Zahra alayha, that do not keep this curtain. It's so beautiful. Fatima, remove it. Because it makes me like the world. It makes me feel a more an attachment to this world. There are things, there are objects that make us want to live. There are people who make us want to live. There are people who make us want to give up all our good deeds. We'll do anything for them to please them. So there are items too, money and things that make such a glorious thing in front of us that we want to want to stay here a bit longer for the wrong reasons. And when you stay for the wrong reasons, then you have allowed the world to tempt you. So the muttaqi person, much like the example I gave yesterday, going through a thorny, bushy area in a silky outfit, knows that if a little thorn catches this dress, it will 
make lines across it. They'll raise it. The muttaqi person then says, not only that I'm going to be very careful as I walk through this narrow path, the muttaqi person who gets to a certain level says, you know what? I'm not even going there. It's okay. No, but we'll be okay. A lot of people go through this dirty path, to this dirty event, to this, this bad place, and they don't give in. It'll be fine. But taqwa takes you to that point where you say, you know, I don't even want to do it. I don't even want to put my clothing through that, my libas, my taqwa. I don't want to take that chance. And that's a very lofty thing to do. Because, uh, and I gave this example this morning, there's this law that you shouldn't be at a restaurant where there is alcohol being served. Then there's uh, the law that you shouldn't be sitting at a table where alcohol is being served. Shouldn't be with somebody who's drunk. So we say to ourselves, you know, it's not like I'm going to drink. I'm able to stop myself. And this is a level of taqwa, by the way, which definitely has to be attained, where you can go to a tempting place and remain untempted. Right? Untempted is a word, yeah. So you remain untempted. You say, it doesn't do anything to me. I'm fasting. You can eat strawberry, cream pie, whatever, ice cream, four-layered chocolate fudge, nothing's going to happen to me. Because I'm in the state of fasting. My whole body is trying to become a muttaqi right now. It's trying to wear this outfit of taqwa all the way into my soul, into my body, every part of me. But we're always in temptation. Maybe in fasting because we do so much of it, we've mastered it. But we haven't mastered this whole thing about the nafs. The nafs also needs nourishment. And the nafs also needs to exercise tolerance with sabr. And the nafs also needs to be able to exercise the ability to be tempted and say to yourself, No, I'm not doing it. Talk to the hand, right? It's not coming to me. And doing that... Yes, exercises this muscle of the nafs. Because the nafsul, lawam, the nafsul amara, shaitan says, that's the, that's the part of the human being I access. That is the part where I talk to. Because that's the baby inside this person, the id, as Freud had talked about. That, that nafsul amara, which the Quran talked about 1400 years ago, Interestingly, by the way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about nafsul amara when the story of Nabi Yusuf and uh, Zuleika came along, where the attraction um, was there and they were in a situation where he could have been tempted, but alhamdulillah, Allah had given his prophet that much uh, tawfiq that he could access his piety and be forever in the remembrance of his Lord. For he said that, and Allah says, because this happened because the nafsul amara is prone to evil. That doesn't mean Allah has made it evil. It's prone to being misguided by the evil. Because shaitan says, I talk to that little child inside that person. That child, when for us to get a visual of it, a baby who wants to go to the fire, a baby wants to grab things, a baby wants to hit people who they love, a baby suddenly slaps you, you're playing with it, and suddenly slaps you on the face. You're like, why? What happened to you? Well, as humans who are growing up, but who still got stuck at nafsul amara level, 1.1, we didn't make it up to, you know, level 7 point whatever. We're still stuck in nafsul amara land. As a baby, you slap people suddenly because it felt good to hit people. It just felt like it. It is an impulse. When you're... An adult, you can still, in interactions, might not slap them, but you will be that kind of person who will say something out of the blue that's painful. You can hurt people. You're not filtered. You are not regulated. You will say whatever comes to your mind. And the things that uh, do work on this, uh, this filter that we're supposed to have, 
What happens when you drink too much coffee? Not only get jittery, but what happens? Don't think before you speak. You get hyper. You say stuff and, you, you know, and then you're like, sorry, I've had too much coffee. Right? Substances do have an effect on us. We're not even talking about alcohol here. We're talking about just coffee. Everything in moderation. There's a reason why we're told that. Because things do play with our body's ability to work the best that it can be. So that Lamborghini would have to go to a Lamborghini dealer to get an oil change. I think it's like 500 bucks or something, by the way. Yeah, because it's that kind of car. You can't just go to anybody, right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created this body, knows exactly what can play havoc with its systems. You get a drop of water in your cell phone, it's going to conk out. The sound stops working. The camera stops working. Things go crazy. Allah says, don't go near these things. Don't ask why. Just, okay, even if you ask why, I'll explain it to you. But sometimes if it doesn't make sense, listen anyway. Not everything has to make sense. Ask questions. I give you the, uh, the, the power to ask questions. In fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has really respected human beings, you know really respected us because he could have made us like angels or animals who have this fitrat and they just do what is supposed to be done we have a fitrat but we can work against it or give in to it this choice is an amazing responsibility but trust that allah gave us it's like saying to your child yeah i'll let you go out into this world and allow you to live far away from me, be on campus, be mixing with people who are drinking, da 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 da, da. but I have great faith in your ability, my child. Now, this example is a tough one because uh, is our taqwa at that level? Not everybody can be tested like that. Why put yourself in a position, and if you think you are a vulnerable person, prone to the nafsul amara, like being prone to evil, you being prone. If you, we all know ourselves. We know, you know, I'm the kind of person, somebody, we say it in, uh, in different languages, you know, uh, in Gujarati we say, Kan no kacho, right? you know, you just allow somebody, whatever they say to you, you fall for it. You don't have the strength to discern between right and wrong. You can be easily influenced. When you know that's the kind of personality you have, you be careful about who you speak to, what you hear, and the judgments you make. Understand that, you know, I'm not a very dependable person. I get swayed. I allow people to put stuff in my head that wasn't true. And I fell for it. If we're that kind of person with human beings, how are we going to be strong against shaitan who doesn't reveal himself, shows up unexpectedly, and then whispers. And he whispers to our core. Why do you think when you want something, it hits you right here it hits you in your body right there like ah, i want this bad he accessed that nafsul amara the way a baby wants to just take what is somebody else's it takes work to get to a point where you can have taqwa enough that you don't go somewhere uh, it, that now you can go somewhere and still not get affected but even then allah says there are some things i'm not going to allow you to do alcohol there are many reasons number one it's so accessible that you might order one that's for the lowest level of taqwa the other is by mistake you take a cup and and you're like whoops that's your cup it was an excuse to drink water but it was also an excuse to explain that by mistake you can drink and then you might be with friends who are like come on take a little so there are all sorts of things they are going on. The other is, you went there, you're not drinking. Someone saw you there, the judgments are made. And you have ruined your reputation. Yes, we care what people think about us because nobody wants to be ta taken for a, an evil, immoral person. You should care about your reputation. People will speak what they want to speak. No, don't give them a reason to speak. Keep yourself in such a way. Because Imam Ali alayhi salam tells Malik Ashtar in that letter, the famous letter, he says, Malik, be careful what people say about you. 
keep your eyes and ears tuned to the impressions you are making out there because there might be an ounce of truth or you are inadvertently giving an impression of yourself that is not beneficial to you so the way we act always ask yourself even though i'm not like this this kind of behavior will make people think i am like this and I am going to suffer for it eventually when my reputation will precede me. You might not care right now, but you might care in a few years, especially if you're suddenly trying to really be a good person now and uh, people will not accept it. They'll say, well, you were this, this person. But let's take it even further. A person who is trying, aspiring for taqwa avoids places where his taqwa will be tested a bit too much. But then he gets to a point where he can sit with somebody who drinks. He can be in a bar. He can have such a good reputation. He's a big scholar, Islamic scholar. He can go to a bar. Nobody will think worse of him because they'll say he might be going to convert people in there. He's not going to drink. Good people, inshallah, will always think the best of Islamic scholars. But nowadays we are the first to point fingers and make judgments. It's, it's heartbreaking. If we are going to mistrust every scholar there is out there, we are going to become orphans. Because the sixth Imam has explained that orphans are the people, they're the people who don't have an Imam alive right now. I mean, they don't have the Imam in front of them. Their Imam is in Ghaibah. So when that orphan who needs his Imam has nobody, when you look in the Quran and it says, be kind to the orphans, it is actually for scholars to teach, this is the sixth Imam's explanation, scholars to teach those who have no Imam right now. So you've got a scholar who's explaining things to you that make bulbs go on and they change your heart. Yes, it would be nice if they were also as pure as they sound. But do yourself a favor. As Imam Ali alayhi salam has said, don't look at the person who's telling you. Look at what they're saying. He has to face his Allah. You don't look beyond the surface. Take his message. And in fact, the more you know, the less you'll be able to respect them. And then you'll lose the opportunity to learn something from them. Therefore, let it go. Let it go. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will do his part, inshaAllah to teach that person as well. For Allah admonishes in the Holy Quran, you do what you say not to do to others. You preach to others, but you yourself do what we have said not to do. So Allah is working on people. But it is not in our place to judge them. To say, oh, they're hypocrites. Yeah, they might be. But the biggest hypocrite is you, right? So work on yourself. Let them deal with their Allah. Let them deal with their Akhirat. If there's something good from them that you're learning, take it. So it is uh, a Mawlana uh, who goes into a bar. Okay? And what happens there is the people he's with are, are high. They're drinking. They're doing all this stuff. Now when that happens, their behavior has changed. So his interaction with them might be a very unusual one not the kind that he would have with people who are sober so their drunkenness can also affect us we might get into an argument with someone or they might be in an argument and we get caught up because now we're with them and we have to save them from the stupidity they're doing haven't you heard of friends who are channeling their friends come on you're drunk you're too much stop it what are you doing get off that table what are you doing right because you're so out of it, you need someone to save you. So being around people who drink has huge repercussions. Not only does it desensitize you from alcohol and from the, the, the guna of it all, but it also makes you a person who has now put themselves in great danger. So the dangers they are causing, but also that they can be very persuasive. They can be flirtatious. They can be, come on, man, try one. Let's go there. Let's jump on this thing. Let's play chicken on the railroad tracks. That's what people do when they're drunk. Let's sit on this car on the top of it and drive. 
So when you're drunk, you're going to do all sorts of crazy things. When you're not drunk, you can still, because your friend was. He is intoxicated and shaitan is attacking him when he gave in to that nafs al -ammara. So, there's a reason why Allah says this. Interestingly, um, the other level of taqwa where we look at the darja, the scholars say that there is a level where you can actually go to a bad place and you can remain very muttaqi. And Allah has allowed that. You can do what you need to, right? But in that taqwa can be exercised. But there's one place that it is high, just, just not recommended at all to, to try your taqwa. And you know what that is? Being alone with someone of the opposite sex. Because shaitan says, I'm the third guy there. Absolutely. For a second, a bad thought will come into the mind of one of them. And you know, you can be so careful not to be alone with people of the opposite sex. But on the internet, we're alone with people of the opposite sex. You can be in a room full of people and they're in, front of, in a room full of people and you can be having a conversation that is very intimate. Social media has opened up a can of worms for us. And Shaitan with his web with his worldwide web of jinns everywhere who are watching with their GPS, locating people and saying, oh, this guy is going into the jungle. Time to send the wolf. Oh, this person's in a, in a bar. This person's alone with a girl. All of this, this person's right now at 3 in the morning on Skype. Or like our phones, show the world we're on WhatsApp, we're online. We're online on Facebook. Those lurking people who are waiting to catch us alone, they're waiting. And Shaitan is the one who helps them find us. So we are in danger and we need to be very, very, very aware of what the internet does, making us alone with people when we're thinking it's quite benign. So when you know that there's an enemy out there, you need to understand how he works, what his strategies are, and what is his mission and what are his strengths and what are his weaknesses and then the reflection and this is the insight that the first ayah that I talked about that uh, the person who is muttaqi gets insight when he's visited by the devil that person who is visiting who is being visited by the devil ha reflects and then says okay the shaitan does this 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 and this is able to do this comes from in the front of me from the back of me from the right and the left whispers, talks to my nafsul amara, I know all these strategies, and there, uh, there's a lot to learn. Shaitan's mentioned quite a bit in the Quran. So there's a lot to learn. There's so many hadith of how he behaves, plus his uh, confessions. So Shaitan is a, a, a research project that could really, really, really be quite interesting. Learn a little bit and you'll say, whoa, this guy works really deceptively. Right? So Shaitan, you know about him, but you got to know about yourself now. And say to yourself, okay, now what are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? How do I uh, behave? What can I do? What can I not do? What does Allah say He will do if I do this? And that empowers a person. That makes a person able to deal with the enemy. Because we can't be like, well, how are we going to fight this guy? Can't even see him. Because Allah says, there is up and down that I access. He forgot that there is up and down. He went from the left and the right and the front and the back. But Allah still finds you. And he says, that, who, that person who is evil cannot touch you if we are with you. Often we worry about, you know, this person is doing jadu, magic on me, witchcraft. This person is doing najr, da 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 da. Yes, these things are true and they can happen. But if you are a muttaqi and you are connected to God and you're doing dhikrullah and you're so in love with God all the time you're talking, breathing, thinking God I'm not saying words taviz I'm talking about something different here you say oh I have this protection, this amulet that's just to make it stronger it doesn't mean that just one second, um, how come it tells me my battery is low when I have connected it to my computer? I just want to make sure I don't lose you all suddenly. Because 
this time I connected it to my computer so that when it dies out, but it looks like it's still not uh, happy. I don't know. That's technology for you. Just give me one second and I'll connect my and and let's hope that the camera Just doesn't waiting for shake you all to come back. I'm that really sorry um, that somehow I must have been really at low battery. Uh, so I almost lost yeah, you, but I'm waiting for all, all of you to come back so that uh, we can continue. I lost about. 30, 40 of you. Uh, okay, so welcome back. Please uh, join while I get a refill. Welcome back, everyone. Thank you so much for um, for staying with me. Appreciate it, and may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala make this a, a fruitful um, experience for all of us. Even if we pick up one thing that can help us, um, it, it it can change our whole life, and that's the beauty of Majlis Hussain. That uh, you can't, um, no one will um, go without something. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep this forever alive for all of us. Um, because this is the only way to salvation for all of us. Alright. So we continue. And I was talking about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has really... Um, thank you. Welcome back all of you. Jazakallah khair. I was talking about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has... Um, really really honored us no, no. is my is the camera too lopsided i don't want to mess with it but yeah that problem again where i don't want you to see my okay i don't want to lose the uh lose all of you either by somehow going offline okay all right, here we are, and without further ado, mashallah, I have all of you back. Okay, so I was talking about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has trusted us a lot to be able to allow us to go out into the world and allow us to make decisions. We think, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to control us. Don't do this, don't do that, don't do this. These controls are in place so that we can stay on the sirat al mustaqim. Otherwise, we will teeter, totter. We're on a tightrope. And that is why um, the, the Pule Sirat will become thin and uh, will also widen. And it all is dependent on how we were behaving when we were on this earth on the Sirat Mustaqim. When we were, our taqwa was in danger and we were like, ah, and then we fell off that tightrope because we just had to give in to that sin. Then there are people who will be hanging on the sirat, on the pule sirat, um, with their fingers, and they might be stuck like that, because it is all a an action replay of what happened to us in this world when we didn't stay on the straight path. It's a very beautiful um, deen that we have. Allah has explained everything, everything, and it's uh, you know, the barzak is 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 an extension and a reflection of how we were on this earth. Uh, do read that book, Journey to the Unseen World. Absolutely amazing book. Yes, it's scary, but it's not all scary. And there's a children's version. Children's version uh, that has pictures. It's phenomenal. You will understand all the Quranic ayat that talk about um, the afterlife. But one of the things that, uh, that this person who is actually a great scholar but writes it as if he's, he died and all these things have happened to him. When he talks about it, he says that uh, I, then I met this person named Hadi and then he took me from here to there and I asked him what is this and he said, do you not know? So he's written a beautiful uh, fictional story, but it's actually truth about how it will happen. But the only way it was, it's really powerful is to make it look as if it's actually happening to a person. right? So in that, he asks Hadi that, you know, how long are you, um, 
yes i heard about this that uh, our um, our our uh, our azadari is uh, is at stake right now may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, bring our awaited one hasten his reappearance because you know you think about it they're trying to stop the exact things that they know have kept this institution alive majlis e hussein hmm? ziyarat of karbala noha khani marsia khani that shows you that these things have kept our deen and and our remembrance of imam hussein alive look at how strong they are that the enemy hits something like that which we think is quite benign like what so marsia they know the power of a poet they understand how important it is to stop people from going to karbala blow them up so that hussein is not remembered because this makes these people strong that is why we must keep going some of us might be collateral damage because we went and we didn't quite make it back alive but that's okay it gives the rest of us the energy to keep going because do you not remember those stories of those people whose arms and legs were cut off because they went to ziarat hussein and they said all right i'll lose an arm let me go okay then now you take the other arm too but i will go those remain as the the icons for us that wow that's love so we have to keep going but inshallah we pray that uh, the 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 path is easier and allah does something that these things that were closed can can start again may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give sabr to those who are struggling with this in their in their cities amen so this respect that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us is phenomenal when he says bismillahir rahmanir rahim hal ata ala al insanu hinam min al dahri lam yakun shay'an mazkura first he's saying you know there was a time man was nothing a non entity somebody not worth mentioning think of a child that has not come into this world it's a non entity think of all the babies that don't happen right us surviving and making it here is not random allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took this thing that first of all there was no concept of it because it's not even been made it's not even going to be made it's just not there but allah says i want it and therefore he says inna khalaqna inna inna khalaqna al-insana min nutfatin amshajin nabtalihi faja'alnahu samiyan basira and we created man from a little dot and then we gave him hearing and sight so allah says here you are you were nothing then i gave you existence and then i developed you i gave you the ability to discern right from wrong i gave you the ability to hear to sense to these are all th- i didn't leave you unequipped i didn't leave you alone in this world just a just an aside no it's not an aside actually this is very much related to what we're talking about but you know it slows me down because there's so much more i want to say but many of us get upset that we're born we say why was i born well i didn't ask to be born you know we say this to our parents sometimes so like you know i gave birth to you i kept you in my womb for 9 months and the kids often will say well i didn't want to be born may allah guide our children so that they never say that but yeah the thought comes to mind okay why should i be thankful when i didn't even ask in fact this world is full of trouble why should i even be here allah is saying listen there are many who didn't get any chance there's no mention of them they don't exist cuz they're a concept that is flushed gone you you made it you're a chosen one it's not random and i brought this uh, you into this world it's not all trouble you're having a good time too don't forget that but i created you because i wanted to give you a gift to make you live forever and ever to earn 
learn something that others will never get a chance because they never got built. They never came. There are people who are born, they die upon entrance to the world. The, the umbilical cord goes around and they're gone. There are people who are born, still born. They're born dead. Right? They're people who live for only a couple of weeks and then they die. Now, we wouldn't call them people. We'd say they are babies. But those were going to be one day a person with a wife and children and home and do something. Like there is a lot that was lost when that thing didn't take place. That life didn't sustain. So we are miracles. We are a work of arts. And incidentally, Alhamdulillah, yes, I talked about this. Uh, today is Saturday. It's actually, uh, and don't say happy birthday, but it is my birthday. Alhamdulillah. But I will say I am happy, and I've talked about this. Uh, Alhamdulillah, it's a very happy day for me, despite the fact that I'm in mourning. This is a different kind of happiness. This is joy that Allah has let me be in this world, doing majlis say Hussein. If you want to wish me, just say, Labbaik ya Hussein. That will do, because... I live for my Hussein. And, and I, my Imam has allowed me to live today so that I can say Labbaik Ya Hussein. He called me and I was able to respond. I am grateful for life. So I always think there was that time when I could have not come into existence. Because Allah is saying, Inna khalakna al insana min nutfatin amshajin nabtalihi faja'alnahu sami'un basira. That, you know, we, we, we created you and then we wanted to try you. We made you hearing and seeing. And then comes that amazing part where he says, And then, Inna hadaynahu sabila imma shakiran wa imma kafura. Now we gave them the power to decide which side to take. We respected him that much. We respected him to give him the time of day to allow him to come to this earth. But then we said, you know, we're going to give you some gifts. Hearing, seeing. We're going to make you something that you're going to have faith. You're going to be born in a home where you will learn who, who God is, inshallah. We're going to give you so many things. You'll never say, God, you left me without tools. We gave you so much. And then we said, I respect you enough. You tell me if you want to love me or not. I created you. But you decide if you want to. I will remain God. I will remain the greatest. You, by choosing me, make yourself great or mediocre. Nothing insignificant. So when we say, I don't want to come, I don't want to come to this earth, understand that that is the biggest kufr we can do. You don't ask Allah, well, it's not like I wanted to be here. You say, subhanallah, I'm a piece of art. I am a miracle. Without getting too technical, because I, you know, I don't want to speak too much, which, which is, you know, we shouldn't be speaking. But understand the miracle of when conception even occurs. How many X chromosomes and Y chromosomes don't make it? They just never make it. So in those billions and billions and billions and billions in one time where conception could happen, somehow in so many days of billions and billions and billions of, of, of Y chromosomes, we got one. And subhanallah, it's a work of art. Tell me there is no God and I will wonder where, what are you thinking? You're not thinking. So Allah gives us such a beautiful respect. He says, I don't need to force you to like me. La ikraha fid But it behooves you to like me. Inna hadayna sabila. I showed you what's right and wrong. Now it's up to you, O oh man. Surah Insan, Surah Dahar. Now it's up to you to decide. Inna husabil, inna hadaina husabila, imma shakira wa imma kafura. Kufr, I can understand, it's where the kafir are. But Allah is talking about something else here. The path of gratefulness as opposed to the path of kufr. When you 
say, I don't want this. I didn't want to be born. When you say to Allah, you don't exist. When you say, Allah, you know, this is the ultimate ihsan faramoshi. You don't appreciate the person who has made all this stuff for you. And you say, I didn't ask for this food. Uh, well, I'm sorry you worked so hard in the kitchen, but I don't really like this. Ahsan Faramosh. The human that you do this will say, you know what? Next time I'm not buying you anything. Next time I'm not spending a whole day in the kitchen for a person like you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deals with this Ahsan Faramosh human being every single day, minute, second. Because these thoughts go, Allah, you're so unfair. Allah, you're the these are all... These are all levels, these are all points, points of kufr. Saying, Allah, you are not just. And then you say, Kul hu Allahu ahad. You are a hypocrite, Allah says. So if you acknowledge me and obey me and say, Yes, la ilaha illallah, then you have done shukr. You have accepted who created you. You have conceded who is responsible for what you are today. It's like when we as kids often say to our parents, I'm more educated than you. Well, I did this and I did that and I did this and they'll say, we are really? Who bought you the car so you could go to university? Who taught you A, B, C, D? Who paid for you to have clothes? And who? So if parents start, but they don't, they can go on and on, right? As Allah tries also. But he doesn't. He says, Hey, how many of my blessings are you going to say, this is nothing? Try it. Eventually you're going to be like, wow, that's a lot. I can't keep saying you didn't do anything for me, God. That person who says, I didn't get anything. Tell me, tell them to answer one thing. Something to that effect. That who is that person who has an empty life? Each person has something. The poorest of the poorest person has something. And they also have life. When you have life, you have hope. You have a tomorrow. So blessed are we because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took it upon our, Himself to allow us to make alliances with Him or to choose the path of kufr, the path of turning away from Him. When you talk about shaitan and his web of deception and his world wide web because his jinns are all over the place and his strategies are so amazing that sometimes when somebody fools you in this world, you're like, wow, everything was a lie. Everything you said to me, everything you, I felt, everything we did, it was all lie. You were out to get me. This was, you've seen those women who's, who've been married to men who had like many other wives and they had entire homes and they had no idea. Those people who change identities. There are people who fool in business and they say, whoa, we had no idea. There are people who pretend to be doctors, but they're not. There's all these people, you'll see the, you know, such people, you know what they leave behind them. They leave survivor groups. They leave a trail of dead bodies. Those people were alive. But they're dead. They, you, they've, they've been killed. They're destroyed. They're crying because they're saying, okay, it's fine he took everything. It's fine that he, you know, like, a, like when men take women for a ride. You say, okay, you know, I might be able to even get over the physical thing that happened that he did. But the lies, man. To be fooled is a very painful thing. The deception makes you feel like, whoa, what a mastermind. He said this, then he did this, and then he was so, the way he said it looked so real, and, and he made himself look like such a wonderful person, and I fell for it, and I thought, this is it. So the survivor groups, what do they talk about? The trauma, 
of being fooled to and fooled and lied to so this trauma group then ends up on the day of judgment when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meets them on the ultimate day of trauma which he calls the day of regret intense regret the day of crying it's a cheerful day there are so many names describing the day of judgment each one explains some very scary things that are going to happen that day the trauma will be to see shaitan and he says yeah i promised all that but i lied and when he says that our hearts are going to break cuz he promised he promised it was okay he promised that you know you're justified in cheating on your spouse you're justified in doing this na'udhu billah adultery you're justified in stealing from this business partner you're justified in not talking to your brother for 30 years allah is going to agree with you when you go complain to him on the day of judgment you know we're waiting for our day in court right we're like can't wait till i meet allah and i'm going to say why did you let this happen to me well in all of the quranic scriptures you'll never find anybody saying any of that to allah then allah knows what's going to happen each one of them are going to be saying us saying i was wrong save me allah forgive me crying regret at our actions waiting for our day of judgment our day in court we're all going to be trying to save our own necks the day in court will come and allah will take to task all those who have wronged us but then there'll be a line of people that we have wronged as well so that day in court we're saying i'm going to ask allah allah is like you won't get time you'll be in so much trouble you're not even going to have a even think about that you're going to be like that's okay i don't care i forgive them all just let me survive this So subhanallah how lucky we are that Allah has already told us what's going to happen. In Sahih Fa Sajadiya Imam Zain Ul Abidin alayhi salam please do a salawat. Talks about this soul this nafs. And he talks about how this nafs has betrayed. Now of course our imams didn't get betrayed but they write this way so that you and I can understand. And he says this nafs I complain to you ya rab I complain oh my lord do read sayfa sajadiya it's just absolutely beautiful mashallah our imam was so sensitive to these things things hurt him look at just the table of uh, contents just the names of the duas are mind blowing like wow he hears thunder and it makes him reflect and there's a dua when he heard thunder he sees the moon he reflects and there's a dua he thinks about his parents he thinks about the people at the frontier he whispers love and thinks and when somebody tests something tests him when somebody mentions death everything makes him when we when we ask for forgiveness in this world um sister for your question uh then we are forgiven because every imam has tried to explain that and the prophets nabi musa alayhi salam with the people who were saying that just a little tear drop formed in the eye of that person when they were all asking for rain remember that famous waqia where every one of them are saying there's somebody here who's such a sinner that our dua for rain is not going to work that person feels guilt alas he's saying don't expose me allah and he says what have i done i'm the cause of everyone's destruction therefore i am going to be destructed allah i am sorry that moment of horror that happens in our lives allah says even if there's a little drop of tears forming in your eye consider it a sign you have been forgiven and we need to believe that We cry for our sins and we say no no you still don't forgive me I know it I wouldn't forgive me of course we wouldn't forgive us because we're not god we're human beings who hold grudges hame 
छोटी छोटी बातों पे बुरा लग जाता है छोटी छोटी बातों पे हम लोगों से बात नहीं करते पूरी जिंदगी निकल जाती है हम तो बहुत बुरे हैं हम कैसे किसी को माफ करेंगे इंसानों को नहीं माफ किया खुद को भी माफ नहीं कर सकते बट दैट काइंड ऑफ um hating oneself and saying you know i allah forgive me is important but like imam ali alayhi salam has said that sin that makes you closer to god what happens you've committed a sin it makes you hold on to your lord and stay awake in salat al layl and say allah al af al af al af you say it a million times you do it for a million nights and you're still saying allah that sin it kills me inside what happens is that sin is killing us and we are still but Allah is saying i've forgiven you you know i've forgiven you that tear drop you're forgiven but every time you cry you become more endearing to me you make me feel that i was right to forgive you makes me feel want to forgive you more and more for even the sins you haven't mentioned because that sin imam ali alayhi salam says that brings you closer to allah is better than a good deed that makes you arrogant mara je wo koi nahi mera jaisa koi nahi hai maine jo kiya hai maine ye charity di maine iski shaadi karwa di maine ye kiya maine wo kiya main mashallah acche kamon se takabbur ho gaya are ye to ab gunah ban gaya लेकिन वो शख्स जो गुनाह की वजह से अल्लाह के दरबार में आए बार बार अल्लाह कह रहा है ये मुझे ये तुम्हारा गुनाह पसंद लाया इट्स बेटर फॉर यू यू नो दैट इज वाई ऑन द डे ऑफ जजमेंट वी विल सी ह्यूज माउंटेन्स ऑफ आवर सिंस ह्यूज माउंटेन्स एंड वी विल से आई एम इन फॉर इट it's over that's why we're going to be crying that's why we're going to be hitting ourselves we saying i know what's coming you don't even have to show it to me i know what's coming i know i've done wrong but then allah does this amazing thing he mentions in the quran he just does a and it's all gone but not only is it gone it's turned into good deeds so something happened on earth that we did that not only deleted that sin but it became wo ek sawab ka baiz ban gaya ke ab salatul layl pad rahe hain kyunki us gunah ko mitana hai aur ab mit to gaya ab wo har gunah ko sawab bana de raha hai khuda subhanallah the justice of god you and i won't be able to understand it वैसे एक अच्छा काम किया तो अल्लाह एक सवाब देगा तुम क्या जानो एक सवाब क्या है तुम क्या जानो कि एक गुनाह क्या है दैट व्हेन यू से जरूर मुझसे कुछ बुरा हुआ होगा व्हेन यू यू नो व्हेन वी समटाइम्स व्हेन वी बाइट आवर टंग और वी ट्रिप और वी गेट समथिंग दैट रियली गेट्स डिस्ट्रॉयड एंड यू आर लाइक यू नो एज वी से इन गुजराती टुडे गुजराती इज कमिंग टू माइंड क्वाइट अ बिट वी से कोई ने हो वो दुखाई भी आई मस्ट हर्ट समबडी और वी से जरूर कोई अब इस वक्त मुझे गाली दे रहा है इसलिए मैंने अपनी टंग को बाइट कर लिया दीज सुपरस्टिशन दैट वी हैव बट यू नो इट इज फॉर अस टू स्टेक बैक फॉर अ मोमेंट एंड से समबडी इज कर्सिंग मी राइट नाउ एंड दिस इज हैपन्ड आई हैड पीपल इन माई लाइफ कॉल मी out of the blue it happens they say i'm suffering right now i'm sick i'm this i'm that and i feel like what have i done wrong and i remember back to such a such time when i did something when i did something wrong to you and i'm wondering you holding it against me still perhaps in my mind i'm thinking whoa i've forgotten about that in fact i wasn't even offended or allah gave me so much that wo dukh bhul gayi this is what allah does this is his justice somebody done this to you i'll give you this much uh, somebody took one thing from you i'm going to give you so much ata mala mal kar dunga ki tum 
उस दुख को भूल जाओगे लेकिन इंसान ये भी चाहिए और वो जो उस दिन उसने मुझसे ले लिया था छीन लिया था मुझे वो चाहिए अल्लाह मेक द कनेक्शन बट आई से वन सच एंड आई हैड अ नंबर ऑफ दिस कॉल्स Allah makes these things happen in my life so I can be able to reflect them upon them. I say to myself, I have forgiven this person. I swear to you I have no ill will towards them anymore. Allah give me so much I made the connection that this is compensation. But subhanallah, 20 years later this person still feeling the pinch but not for 20 years after 20 years. Allah is so amazing that he makes sure that we do say sorry for a sin. He reminds us of our dirty days, things that we did. So that we can say, "Oh my god, patani, I hope those people can forgive me. I stole an eraser from a kid in grade 3. I I don't know, uh, pushed an auntie at the mosque one day. Now these silly things come to mind. You're like, "Oh my god, what did I do?" Astaghfirullah. Allah wants us to remember and sometimes he sends he makes us call people years later. It takes guts to do that. But he gives us life so we can make amends. He gives us life. Now I've taken so much of your time. Um I I I don't know if I should go on because um there's so much I always want to say. How about okay, just a few more minutes and cover some of these points because we were going to talk about shaitan. Um I would talk about shaitan again if you allow me to some day because I can go on and on about shaitan. You know how it is with our enemies. We know everything about them. That's why we stalk people on Facebook and social media, right? Like, "Oh, look, look, they think they're all that. Now look what they're doing. Oh, wow, they bought a house." Right? <laughs> This is how we are. We keep track of our enemies. So, I I research shaitan. Because I want to understand what makes this this guy who is such a good guy turn against his own lord. What a loss! What a loss if this person had stayed, if this angel had stayed, this jinn had stayed on the straight path. Wow! So the fourth Imam talks in Sayyid Faisal Jadia says, "Oh Allah, I, I'm shikayat kar raha hu is is nafs ke liye." इस नफ्स के बारे में शिकायत कर रहा हूं जो फरमा बरदार नहीं है जो ना फरमानी करता है और खुश होता है और हर एक काम करता है जिससे तू खफा हो जाएगा ए अल्लाह मैं शिकायत करता हूं इस दिल के बारे में इस दिल के बारे में शिकायत करता हूं जो बिल्कुल सख्त हो गया है इतना सख्त हो गया है जजाकल्ला खैर फॉर अप्रिशिएटिंग सो काइंड ऑफ यू शर्मिन फ्रॉम फ्लोरिडा सुबह और मे बी वाशिंगटन अमेरिका थैंक यू सो ही सेज ओ अल्लाह ए कम्प्लेन ऑफ दिस हार्ट ये दिल जो सख्त हो गया है ये आंखें जो रोती नहीं हैं जो तुझे याद करके आंसू भी नहीं आते जिसे ये आंखें जो कभी अफसोस ही नहीं करती बारे इलाहा मैं इस दिल की शिकायत कर रहा हूं जो इतना सख्त हो गया है कि इस पे जंग चढ़ गया है इट्स गॉटन रस्टी इस पे रंग जंग सुबह अल्लाह वट इज द हदीस अबाउट द हार्ट दैट हैज रस्ट रिसाइड कुरान टू रिमूव दैट रस्ट Imam is using beautiful things in his dua if there is an analysis done on it it will allude to some quranic ayat some thing that happened in history that is the incredible beauty of our imams they knew when a ayat was revealed they knew what allah was referring to and that is why the sixth imam says you don't really know what the quran is about you just know the top layer We know the tawil of an ayat. We know the shan and nuzul. We know what is truly Allah indicating about. We can tell you what Quranic ayat is referring to. What Imam? There are some Quranic ayat that every sect will tell you is about Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. Mere Mola 
میری جان سد کے میرے ایز وی سی ان آل دا دواز بی ابھی امی رائٹ مائی پیرنٹس بی سیکریفائز ٹو یو مام دا موسٹ پریشس تھنگس دیٹ وی ہیو وی گیو ٹو یو دیٹ یو آر سو گریٹ دیٹ نو ون کین ڈینائی دیٹ اللہ ہیز پریزڈ یو ان دا ہولی قرآن دی احل البیت علیہ السلام پریزڈ ان دا قرآن دے آر سام بٹ دے آر مینی ہڈن میننگ سکسٹی مام ایکسپلینس دے ہیڈ ٹو بی ڈن دیٹ وے بیکاز ادر وائز یہ لوگ قرآن کو بھی قرآن کو بھی چھپا لیتے اگر حدیثوں کو اپ سائڈ ڈاؤن کر دیا اگر باتیں جو کس کے بارے میں تھیں کسی کے بارے میں کر دی اب سا و تولا رائٹ ہی فراؤنڈ سینگ دا پروفٹ فراؤنڈ سیریسلی جس یو وانٹ پروٹیکٹ دیٹ ہو واز دا ریئل پرسن ہو فراؤنڈ دس ہیپنس دس ہیپنس سو دا سکس امام ایکسپلینس that if the true names were in there and we often say why didn't Allah just say it then this problem of the sects wouldn't happen no the truth would not have remained alhamdulillah the sunshine has come in full force and I feel the noor it seems as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is happy with us all here right now may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept um, the um, what we send to to him uh, the little things that we are doing agar kuch pasand aa gaya hai allah to qabool kar de aur kuch agar galti ho khitabat mein sunne mein karne mein to bare ilaha wo hamari galtiyan samajh ke hum jo gunahgar hain unko maaf kar de teri rehmat teri adalat se behtar hai aur tu rehm karne wala hai ameen So the sixth Imam has explained, uh, or the Imams have explained, many of them, that uh, those who don't have taqwa, they do this. They jump on worldly desires, number one. Number two, they use obscene words and acts. And number three, they do publicity of their evil. Uh, social media has kind of taken us that far, hasn't it? Instagram, Twitter, etc., Facebook. It can be used for a good thing, much like a knife can be used for a good thing. But... We can also use it to kill somebody, right? What's happening is we are doing open sins, publicizing our sin. On top of it, we are using dirty words. We are gossiping about people. And on top of it, we are showing, look what I have. Look how great I am. My car, the place I'm eating, my purse, my children. There's, there is an element of great show-offness in social media. Even if you try to be very true to be a good person, there is something about it. It's look at me, look at me. No doubt. No doubt. So the three things that imams have said, that worldly desires, obscene words, and publicity of evil is all basically describing social media when used incorrectly. Dressing without chastity. This is what's happened to us. We have uh, allowed social media also... To do the work of shaitan times a million, right? I see Najaf has joined us. Uh, Jazakallah khair. I see also New York has joined us. Subhanallah. Thank you so much for uh, joining. And um, Imam Zainul Abidin alayhi salam says that these are the qualities of the muttaqi. They are pious in private. They don't need to show off. Look, I just completed a hundred rakat namaz. Salat. I did, you know, it's, it's Laylatul Qadr. I did this, 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 this. Ye jo ibadat pe jo takabur a jata hai na, ye to sab se buri cheez hai. Yuki shaitan ne ye rasul-e khuda sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam ko bataya tha ki jab mein kisi ko namaz se rok nahi paata aur aise hote hain log ki hum karte hain koshish jas se humari hoti hai. کہ ابھی نماز کا وقت کہاں ہے کہاں جا رہے ہو وقت ہے پھر وہ اگر پہنچ رہا ہے وضو کرنے تو ہم اسے کسی اور کام میں مبتلا کر دیتے ہیں پھر ہم آگے جاتے ابھی اس نے وضو کر دیا تو ہم اسے کہتے ہیں کہ اب یہ بھی کر لو کام یہ بھی کر لو ابھی تو وقت ہے قضا نہیں ہوئی اب روکتے روکتے وہ ہم سے چھوٹ گیا اور اب پہنچ گیا اپنے مسلے پہ 
तब हम कहते हैं कि अब हमें हमारा ये जो एस कार्ड है ना वो जो पत्ते में होता है अब मैं हमारा एस कार्ड निकालता हूँ ए वाला कार्ड है ये आई डोंट प्ले कार्ड्स थैंक गॉड विच वी शुडेंट बी सो आई डोंट नो वट दैट पत्ता इज कॉल्ड इन उर्दू दी ए कार्ड पर ही सेज दैट आई मैं ये करता हूँ कि मैं उस वक्त उसकी नमाज के अंदर आके अब वो नमाज पढ़ रहा है उसकी सलाद को मैं किस तरह बिगाड़ता हूँ उसके कान में एक छोटी सी बात कह देता हूँ मैं कह देता हूँ माशा कितनी अच्छी नमाज पढ़ी है तुमने कितने कितने फर्मा बरदार और दीनदार और मुतकी इंसान हो तुम तुम्हारे जैसे कोई थोड़ी पढ़ता है और ये भी है ना पाए थी इन प्राइवेट इवन इन प्राइवेट तकवा इज अंडर डेंजर देर आर थोर्स इन दैट बुश एज वेल इट्स नॉट जस्ट गोइंग टू एन अल्कोहल रिडन प्लेस और अ प्लेस वेर वेमेन आर ड्रेस्ट विदाउट मॉडेस्टी शेतान comes in our room while we are on the musalla on the prayer mat and he says good job feel good allah has forgiven you now wow i would be impressed if i was god now all this stuff thing is he doesn't come and say excuse me hello how are you i'm shaitan he doesn't do that he's a deceptive creature he talks to our nafsul ammara become so friendly with him that now that friend you know how you talk like your friend you sound like your friend you laugh like your friend you pick up mannerisms that your friend has you start to say the swear words that your friend says people say you guys really hang around now you sounding just like him or her right shaitan then speaks in such a way that his voice feels like our voice we have given him room in our life in our heart in our mind in our soul that's his world wide web it's far reaching it finds its signal so far away and yet finds it where you say wow and men the woods and i have got i've got wifi i got signal he finds his prey he finds it he locates it he keeps an eye on it one week moment as he explains to the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam i arrive when somebody is about to do jihad now jihad al nafs is the jihad al akbar remember we're not going on to battlefields may our imam come so that we get that chance but not all fights will be on the battlefield even in imam's time so that jihad that we're doing when we're saying no, i'm not going to do this i'm not succumbing to this evil act that's when he comes and he says but it's not your fault but allah will understand what you were going through allah will not hold this against you i'll help you out on this one you have all your defenses you can say this guy made me do it who my husband because he abandoned me who this guy who stole from me so now i steal because i have to, i have no money well i am an oppressor okay but because others have oppressed me so i i'm a victim of circumstance oh allah no that's shaitan giving us very bad logic two wrongs do not make a right my friend on the day of judgment allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says everyone will be called with their imam and then there are some of us god forbid who will have to realize that shaitan is their leader they say no 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 i was a follower of ali i was this. why am i with this guy these guys are going to hell at that time they will be told what you believed in your heart is the truth much like the dead person in the grave when he's asked who is your lord we're like i can answer that allah no at that time by the way munkar and nakir are pretty scary very scary uh, malaika they're going to be really scary tell me the truth who who do you work for who do you work for and they give you trouble they give you pain so that you say okay okay i'll tell the truth because you know what the truth is you just want to hear it from my mouth yes shaitan was my lord that's why it's a scary time because only truth will come out at that time at that time 
when we are standing with shaitan, we say, we had the defense worked out, right? Can you like tell Allah why I did all this? Because now he's asking me. Shaitan will say, I am out of here. He'll say, I am away from this. These are all Quranic ayat. He says, you know, I made promises, absolutely. I said I'd help you out. I told you it all makes sense. I made promises. And I'm glad that my daughter has joined on the Facebook chat live. Everybody, a big show of hands to a daughter who has come to Majlis that her own mother is reciting. Alhamdulillah, sorry to embarrass you, Zainab. But it was too, um, it was too tempting. God bless you, my child, for listening to Majlis. Alhamdulillah. And so, at that time, Shaitan will say, I'm, Allah made promises, remember? I made promises too, no doubt. But you're the fool here. That was Allah. Allah's promises are true. You know that. I'm shaitan. Did I ever lie to you about who I am? Did I ever say I'm your friend? I said I'm your enemy. Allah told you that too. He made promises. I made promises. But sorry, I lied. And people say that to us in life too. They say, yeah. Sue me. I lied. What are you going to do? I think sometimes Allah allows some evil people to come into our lives to con us just so that we will get the fear of God. They make us end up on the prayer mat crying, saying, Allah, I was wrong. I took that bad turn. I trusted this person. You were right all along. Because it's like ending up on your mom's lap. Mom said, don't do this. This friend is bad for you. This, this guy that you are interested in is bad news. This career choice, this staying out with the friends, this, that, and that, this dressing. And when we get burned in life, we have this hope that mom is not going to say, I told you so. Because moms are like that. But you know what? Even if mom would say, I told you so, we still go to her lap. Because we have no choice. We have no one on this earth that we can go to when we have been badly, badly lied to. And Allah says, I love you more than a mother. Come to me. That is why your mom also is not going to be on this earth forever. Because you don't need... You, you need her, but don't use people as a crutch in such a way that then you forget who your Lord is. Come to me. Learn. Adat kar do ke tum khuda ke paas rone ao. Adat kar do ke tumhe khuda se sukoon mile. Kyunki maa to ek fani cheez hai. Khuda humari maa ko salamat rakhe. Lekin inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajihun. Sab ko jana hai. Koi cheez ko itna na chaho. اتنا اپنا نہ بنا دو کہ جب خدا اپنی چیز لے لے تو تمہیں ہو کہ وہ تمہاری چیز لے رہا ہے حالانکہ تمہیں کہنا ہے ان اللہ و ان اللہ راجعون اللہ یہ تیری ہی چیز تھی خوشی سے دے دے رہے ہیں ہمیں پتا تھا یہ دن آئے گا تجھے تو دینا ہی تھا واپس لیکن ہم اتنے جڑے رہتے ہیں اس چیز سے ہم اتنا اپنا بنا لیتے ہیں اتنا اس سے اٹیچمنٹ ہو جاتا ہے کہ ہم بھول جاتے ہیں سب کچھ اللہ کی دین ہے So, uh, the fourth imam say, is saying that piety in private is what I'm looking for in taqwa. And that means also not takabur when you're doing piety, right? Donating especially in the time of need. Jab insan tangi mein ho, paise nahi ho, aur agar koi bheek maangne aai, aur to bhi, to bhi ek, jo bhi ek sikka ho, wo de de. And he say, you know, I'm so sorry. Mere paas itna hi hai, yaar. You'll notice it's only the poor people who really do good things. You notice that? I mean, Alhamdulillah, there are good people who are rich too. But poor people know how it hurts to have no money. Poor people understand hunger. Poor, poor people understand the struggle. Because the struggle is real for them. And that's why you'll see people with the most simple one-bedroom house will have guests, will be giving their one outfit to someone to wear to a job interview. Will be giving money that 
was meant for their child's fees or something because you're sick and you need it more. Because they get it. That is why being rich is also a big test. A huge test. In fact, it's worse of a test than being poor. Because when you are rich, you forget God. You can. But when you're poor, you ask God. But you can also, the other way too, eh? This, I'm just thinking of all the hadith where the beggars, uh, the people who are poor can also do kufr because we have a choice, right? Inna hadainahu sabila imma shakirah, the gratefulness or the, or the kafura. Or the kafir behavior. So you could be poor and be the most thankful and most pious person and connected to God. Or you can be completely rich and that's not a test. You're using it to make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pleased. It's all about how uh, we use our uh, ni'mat. And if we remain connected with God, then we would never... How long have I been talking? This is the second video. So I, I really need to let you people go. But uh, your uh, presence here makes it all worthwhile. I see people joining from Toronto right now. Somebody from uh, Orlando. Welcome. And I hope that, inshallah, you're all safe in Orlando. And that you're not too flooded up. Uh, inshallah, Allah has uh, taken care of you before. And He'll take care of you again. That's the, that's the promise He has made. So... I'll uh, just take us to our ending now, inshallah. And uh, much to say, but shaitan, I think, can, there can be a whole, whole ashra on shaitan. Because it's all about how to escape this guy. I mean, if we know, if we do that, then we, we, we're well on our way. So inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the courage to understand and to recognize him and to have insight when he visits us. That is the whole point of Allah allowing him to even come near us. And when the people who love Allah are visited by shaitan, they, they become more alert. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran. And today, is a day when we uh, remember the Shuhada e Karbala um, and there are so many of them. No, we would say there were only 72, right? When we say there are so many of them, it's because there's so many virtues of each of them that it would take us over 72 days to give justice to all of them. Over 72 days, absolutely. Each one of them was a work of art. Each one of them was muttaqi because Imam selected. Imam selected those that he wanted to represent him. Those who he, Imam, knew would be remembered forever and ever. 1400 years and um, the dhikr of people like Zuhair ibn Qayn, Habib ibn Mazahir, Muslim ibn Asaja. There are so many. And we typically remember people like John today, John Alamdar. We remember also, um, Zuhair is one of them that we remember today. I would like to talk about John Alamdar and remind us that John was a black slave, but he wasn't just any ordinary slave. Remember, Imam alayhi salam chose, nitpicked those who were the best of the best because he knew they are going to be highlighted for 1400 years and beyond. So much ke har ek shuhada ko ek mauka mila ke saath aale. Ye kafila imam ka jo ja raha tha bohut aise mauke aaye hain, lamhe aaye hain jab badi badi fawjo ne imam ko kaha hume aapke saath aana hai. Or Imam ne unse kaha, nahi, aap na ayin. History tells us that huge forces came and said to Imam, intercepting and saying, Ya Imam, we are with you in this battle. Imam said, let me tell you then, that 
this is going to be a battle where nobody is going to remain alive. I wouldn't say it's a losing battle, but there's nothing to be gained in terms of war booty or, or, or land or all the things that people want. And thousands of people turned away at that time. Big army. They said, oh, okay, if that's the way it's going to be, mom, then mafi jate hum log. Many people did hurt Imam in that respect because he was like, wow. You come and you say, we are with you and all that, but when the moment of truth comes, you're like, I can't do that. It's much like how we women struggle with the hijab. We'll do everything. Much less say, Hussein, this, that. But don't ask us of this. Because... Our beauty is hard to hide. And now it's a habit. And we don't have to do it. And this and that. These are the things that are happening. Allah says, I understand exactly what you're talking about. And how true you are. Surah Fath, look at it. About the people who didn't join when the Rasul Khuda was leaving um, for this uh, dream he was chasing. Which became true. But it was a dream. And he said, we're going to be doing Tawaf. Inna fatahna laka fatham mubin. Fatahna laka fatham mubin. We're going to be victorious. Let's go. And people said, you know, we've got children who are sick. We've got this problem. We've got that problem. Can you ask Allah to forgive us? We, this, this time we can't come with you. Sorry. And the Quran talks about it very, very openly. And, and really admonishes those people. And says, so you say you're with us and then you make these false false promises and then you make these false excuses you know and I know that they are not real. Let's make this Muharram that Muharram where we become real and we talk the talk and we walk the walk and we dress the way Allah wants us to as well. It can be done. Somehow, it's become so hard to speak about hijab from the member because people get upset. So Molana talks about it. Everyone says, yeah, well, it's not his issue. It's a women. Why is he talking? The, if the Zakira speaks about it, the, um, the women get all up in arms and say, who are you to tell us how to live our lives? And what do you know? And yeah, yeah, we know we should, but don't go there. Maybe it's the style that the old people, olden days used to use. But it doesn't matter what the style is. Look at the message. Don't look at who's saying it. Don't look at anything but the fact that when we go to our grave, we are going to be covered. <laughs> We're going to have a hijab. That's going to help us a lot. A lot of na mehram in the grave to, uh, to wear that for, you know? Wear it where it counts. Wear it where Allah will see what a jihad each day is. And say, this I love. You have stayed true to your promise. John was that kind of person. He had made a commitment. But he was not an ordinary, I hate to use the word slave, but he was a gulam. Like so, much, so many of us name our children, Gulam Abbas. There is great pride in being called a gulam, a slave, when it's a slave of Hussein. When, it's, when it is a slave, when, when you say Ababdillah al Hussein, it is a slave of Allah. To call somebody a slave, but when you say slave of Allah, it becomes the highest, highest thing that a person can be. It's an oxymoron, but it's yet so real, right? So true. So what happens is John actually was a slave of Abu Dhar Ghafari. Abu Dhar Ghafari was actually, he, his whole tribe then became uh, believers, Muslims. He was a very well-connected and rich man. Beautiful stories about Abu Dhar Ghafari and how he searched and searched until he found the Holy Prophet wasallam. He had given up his whole life and his, his riches in search of God. I'd say it was like a, 
I guess in this day and age, we would call somebody like a malang, a Sufi, a person who's searching, searching the true malangs, searching, searching, searching and saying, where are you, God? Let me find you. For Abu Dhar Ghaffari went through Christianity, he went through Judaism, he tried everything. He tried it all and he would say, no, it's not enough. I am looking for something else. Until he came to the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Abu Dhar Ghaffari gives his slave, his most trusted right-hand man, you would say. You know what happens when sometimes you've got really, really, really good workers and people say, wow, can you work for me? I'll give you more. I just, just become mine. You know, people recruit people. They see somebody's secretary. They see somebody's house cleaning lady. They're like, you know what? You're in the wrong place. Come to me. And those of us who are the bosses say, hello, this was my work, good worker. You've done amanat me khayanat. But Abu Dhar Ghaffari gifts his most precious servant, his most, most trusted right-hand man to Imam Ali alayhi salam. Imam Ali alayhi salam then gives John to his son Hassan. And then John becomes the slave of Hussein ibn Abi Talib. Think about the incredible personalities that John has worked so closely with. When you work for someone, you become their alter ego, right? And what happens is, in history we find, every imam, their servants became Hafiz the Quran, walking, talking Quran, teachers in their own right, changing their entire tribes. That's what the Imams did. They kept so many slaves, first of all, to get them out of slavery so that they could free them, which is what happened with the fourth Imam, by the way. They say the fourth Imam had so many, had, had freed so many slaves that if he had lived a bit longer, he would have abolished slavery in his time. It's in history. So, here we have an imam who has a slave who is really a veteran to work for Abu Dhar Ghaffari, who is a huge companion of loyalty and love and, and service. A life to really read about. There are books on just Abu Dhar Ghaffari. But you can also do internet search. Ask who are these people who went with a caravan that was headed for death? What motivates somebody to do that? Didn't they have lives? Didn't they have wives? Didn't they, have, didn't they love the world? They were told what's going to happen. Imam was very clear about it. Imam, at that night when he turned off the candles, when he extinguished the candles and he said at night, the night off, Imam said, go. I'm telling you now, right now, again, no one's going to make it out alive tonight. And the conversation that happens with all of them, they are great presentations made. Please do read this history. Each one of them stands and gives eloquent, eloquent allegiances heart-rending speeches not just to say mom i love you not just to remind themselves sometimes we do that just so that we can be motivated no no i'm here i'm here because i really care about this you know we have to not only that but some of them were just doing it so that others could get motivated this is the muttaqi who does doesn't just stand on haq doesn't just do sabr. He enjoins others to stay on haq. Enjoins others to do sabr. This is called the muttaqi. These are the ones who are not in khassara. They will not lose out. They, Allah is proud of them. He swears by the time, coming of time. There are people who at that night say, Ya Imam, they can take me and kill me 
And if Allah resurrects me again, I would again give my life for you and they will cut me up into shreds. And Allah, if he revives me again, I will go back on the battlefield. And if I am bleeding and being cut again, and if Allah resurrects me and it happens a hundred times, my Imam, I give you my life, I give you everything and I give you my undying loyalty. I pray to be revived so that I can die again in your love. That's incredible love. We want that kind of love. We want to be that person. Because we, we, the, the, the ziyarats are there, ziyarat the ashura, where we say all this, but we don't feel it. When we're saying, may my mother and father be sacrificed to you. Do we sacrifice anything? We can't sacrifice even discomfort. We can't sacrifice Islamophobia, you know, and hijab in this era. We can't sacrifice anything. He say we'll give our parents and then we say oh if only I was alive that day imam no we're alive now and we can't we can't stay on the straight and narrow shaitan tells us are you gonna die for this are you crazy save yourself don't go to Karbala there's bombs there don't go to Majlis Hussein because there are people watching don't do those don't say openly on the internet that, you know, it's Muharram. Takiya is there, but our, how are we going to do tabligh if we're going to be scared? It requires strength. At that time, John, who has worked for all these great personalities, they say that on the night of Ashur, John is in deep thought. What would a bodyguard be doing but thinking? They say that John was so imam with the imam that if Abbas was looking at Imam Hussain was with the imam. If Hussain is, you know Abbas. In this way, John was a bodyguard. John was like this कि जहां इमाम हुसैन गए हैं जॉन साथ में थे इसीलिए जब इमाम हुसैन उस जंगल में अकेले निकल पड़े क्योंकि इमाम को भी अपने रब से बातें करनी थी और इमाम ने भी ऐसे लोगों से बातें की हैं जो मिलने आए तब अकेले में यही जॉन था जो करीब खड़ा रहता था और सब कुछ सुनता था ये जॉन है जो इमाम अली अली सलाम के हर एक दुख को भी सुने होंगे और जाना होगा कि किस तरह किसने क्या कहा है और किस तरह धमकियां दी हैं और दुख पहुंचाया है इस जॉन ने हसन को भी देखा होगा किस तरह उसे मजबूर किया गया है किस तरह हुसैन को मजबूर किया गया और एक जंगल तक ले गए और कोई न रहा जॉन ने सब कुछ देख लिया और जब इमाम हुसैन बातें करते हैं अपने रब से शब आशूर इमाम हुसैन ने जो इबादतें की हैं और जब वो जंगल में अकेले जा के कह रहे थे कि भारे इलाहा इन लोगों ने हमें बिल्कुल अकेला कर दिया है बारे इलाहा इस तनो तनहा जंगल में मेरा दुश्मन मुझ पे हंस रहा है मैं बिल्कुल अकेला हो गया हूं और अब एन करीब है वो वक्त जब हुसैन तेरे पास वापस आएगा मेरे रब इट इज जॉन हु हियर्स दैट इट इज हाय मेरे मौला योर वॉइस is like the voice of Ali. It is as if I can hear Ali reciting that eloquent du'as that Ali used to recite. This is the, this is the sound of Mawla Ali. And he cries and he says, this is the same Hussain. That is Ali's son. What is happening here? 
That night where he stands outside the tent and he's hearing everybody praying and everybody preparing each other's children and each other and sharpening their swords. John says, can it happen that I too can get this opportunity? And he's talking and asking himself and he's talking out loud which is why we have history to tell us what was happening to John. And he was saying, could it be that I too could be one of these most fortunate people to give Hussein their blood, their allegiance? And he says, no, it won't happen. Because this is for those, this is for the elite. It's not for people like me. I'm black. I have no status. And that is exactly what he says on the day of Ashura. He goes to Imam Hussein and he says, Ya Imam, Ya Imam, you have been so good to me. You have given me everything I've ever wanted. I have enjoyed luxury in your home. And I have enjoyed knowledge and everything I could have ever wanted. I ask you, I beg you for something. Can you please let me join you to, today? Give my life for you. And Imam replies something very beautiful. He says, John, I release you. You are free to go. This is not your battle, John. You were here to give us service. Not to die for us. I release you. Go, John, go. Because it's not right. I'm not forcing anybody to give their life. And John cries out loud. He says, So I join you and I stay with you in times of happiness. And I leave you in times of difficulty. And he says, What freedom is this? That separates me from my Lord, from my Imam. I don't need that freedom. I want to be free to be with you. This is why we hear things like Imam Hussein saying, Oh Lord, what has he lost who has found you? Because if you have God and you've lost your life, and you've lost people, then you have not really lost anything. You've got God. And John says, Ya Imam, I know that I am not of noble ancestry. Mere ragu me Sayyid ka khun nahi hai. Na aise koi kabile se hu ki mujhe koi fakhr ho. Aise koi log bhi nahi hai mere. Aise koi family se nahi hu. Na mera aisa rang hai ki mujhe koi you know, this moment in history is a classic, beautiful example of what Islam did for the, for the slaves and for those who were black. The racism, the classism, everything that was an, a quality of the Jahiliya. Islam said, you are noble, not because of your color, your creed, your family, your status, your money, your this, your that. It is your taqwa. And at that time, Imam says to him, John, that's not the case. That's not true. You are one of us. John says, I know that my body doesn't smell good. I sweat out here in the sun. I don't smell good. I don't look good. I'm a black slave. I am a nobody. But Imam, in my love for you, there is nobody can love you more. And he says, Imam, I can never be you. I can never be a Sayyid. I can never do this. I can never do that. I can never come up in the world. But you know what? That's all right. What I want is to be one with you. And he says a very beautiful thing. He says, I have heard that on the day of Ashura, 
today that all these dead bodies will now be trampled and and everyone will be mixed with each other so i want to die for you in this battle because our blood can get mixed and your body will be mixed with mine this is called ultimate love when you tell a loved one i want to be one with you closer than we can ever be john says i want to be crushed and mushed trampled by horses so that i can be one with you and what's even more beautiful is that he is buried with all those shuhadai karbala the shrine of imam hussein he got that he got that because when you want something deeply imam will give it to you and what happens is john says i want to be one with you i want to give my life for you yeah imam i'm a free man yes then i freely as a free person say to you now i come here to join you imam lovingly sends john into the battlefield and you know what happens with john he goes out and he says you have fought all of these some of them are weak some of them are rich some of them are are fair in color and this and that now see what a poor slave black no name can do for the love of hussein you think you are somebody i'll show you what it is to be nothing and in love with somebody who elevates you and he gives them the most amazing eloquent praises about ali and hussein and hasan and the prophet he does his part and then when he is martyred or john jab akhri salam kehta hai اور کہتا ہے السلام علیک یا ابا عبد اللہ اور حسین جب دوڑ کے آتے ہیں اور جان کو اپنے باہوں میں لے لیتے ہیں کہتے ہیں جان تم نے بہت وفا کی تم نے وفا کی پوری زندگی اور مرتے دم تک بھی وفادار دیر از وائی وی کال ہم جان عالم دار He's held up the flag of Islam, but when we look at the Alamdar that was Wafadar Abbas, John also was the same kind of Wafadar. And he says in his last breath that Imam accepts this from me. History tells us that John, his body was one of the bodies that was found by those who came to do the burial. his body stood out because there was a very beautiful fragrance emanating from him he was a shuhada-e karbala that was noticed not for any scent that the dead are often recognized for there was a beautiful scent because he had said remember i don't smell good right that's why you don't want me imam had shown that I can take away every defect. I can compensate you for everything. I can give you in such a way that in death you shine remembered forever. We send our salams to John Alamdar, to all the shuhada-e Karbala, to all those like the newly wed Wahab and the newly wed wife of his. We send our salam to those like the mother who sends the head back and says what we give in Allah's way we do not take back. We send our salam to that wife who runs into the battlefield and is martyred. We send salam to all the shuhada e Karbala who had to tighten a belt so that they could stand straight because they were stooping and old and hundred years old salam to all the shuhada e karbala who make us motivated who are inspirations who are shining stars 
they show us the way forward. Salam to all of them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala curse those who have oppressed you and who have killed you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to follow in your footsteps and to leave a legacy like yours. A legacy of undying love and faithfulness for the Imam of our time. Ajjalallahu ta'ala farajahum sharif. I thank you all for staying with me and inshallah all those who will be watching this after as well. Um, thank you so much for uh, gracing this majlis e Hussain. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you for every second you spent here uh, and made uh, your, your news feed become full of barakah and maghfirat inshallah and acceptance of hajat. Uh, inshallah uh, we'll see you tomorrow again. ہو سکے تو اس کنیز کو بھی اپنی دعا میں یاد کیجئے گا کہ ہم مجلس حسین کو کا وہ حق ادا کر سکیں جو بہت بڑی ذمہ داری ہے کہ ہم رونے والوں کے آنسوں کو جاری کر دیں کہ ہم امام کی عظیم قربانیوں کو لفظ اور محبت اور آنسوں سے اس طرح سے بتا دیں لوگوں کو کہ لوگ کہتے رہ جائیں کہ آج ہمیں محسوس ہوا ہے کہ کیا وہ کیا مصیبتیں ہمارے اماموں نے کا سامنا کیا آئی آسک فار یور ہیلپ ان یور دعا سو دیٹ آئی کین ڈو جسٹس ٹو دس ویری 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 بگ ریسپانسبلٹی پری فار ایلوکوینس پری فار مائی تھنگ ٹو سی تھنگس ایزیلی اینڈ ٹو سی وٹ ایور نیڈس ٹو بی سیڈ بیکاز بی بی نوز وٹ ایوری ون نیڈس ٹو ہیئر Therefore, do it so that I can pray so that, that I can do that, that everything that needs to be heard and needs to be said is done. Jazakallah khair for everything and for being here. This uh, video, as soon as I press finish, will stay. So uh, those who have just joined uh, can access it in probably just three, four, or five seconds. All right? Because it just uh, gives us a few seconds and then it comes online. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.